it's time to settle the score, to make a big choice. Some call it a battle, a war, a fight. But we call it the dispute, where we go back and forth from back and forth to give you our best opinion on who Arsenal to sign in the summer transfer window. And then we leave it for you to decide. So welcome to the transfer exchange, the dispute. That's better. And it's not the only bit of magic you're going to see today, because I have got a treat for you. We've got three of the best young strikers around Europe. Well, the Arsenal are after. First of all, we've got Kerem Adeyemi, the German international. He's an absolute baller. We've got Emil Roback, the beast from Sweden. He's got quick feet. He's built like an ox. He's about six foot one or six foot two. I'm gonna stop. I'll save it for the experts to sort of hype you up a bit. And of course, there's, a, there's always three, or sometimes it's four. Cesar Gilbert of Real Madrid. Ooh, what a player. And of course, and of course, we've got an expert. Today, we've got an expert who is an expert in South America again. But it's not just, South America's a big place. Today, we've got Simon Edwards. His expertise are in Colombian football and just around any South American football in that region. He also speaks about the new batch of Ecuadorian youngsters that are coming out, which are about to take over the world. I'm not even joking, they're different levels. They are different levels. But uh, wait and see. And I'm only gonna give you a snippet because his full interview comes out next week, so watch out. But why waste any time? Here we go. You must be here for the Swedish international, Emil Rolbach. Here we go. Sweden uh, international, not a full international because the guy's only 17 years old, but I can't throw stats and stuff at you because if you go and look, there's literally no stats whatsoever. But I'm going to tell you how this guy actually plays on the pitch. How fantastic he is. For 17 years old, the strength that this kid has got, it's like the same strength that Didier Drogba had when he was at Chelsea. He's fantastic at getting out of tight situations. Uh, for under-16s, I do two things I do know. For under-16s for Sweden... He got four assists and one goal, and then from under-17s, he went up to two goals and two assists. The way that he dribbles, the way that he gets past a man, the way he... At 17 years old, 17, I was learning just to pick up a dumbbell. 17 years old, the way that this guy literally shoulder barges and gets rid, basically. Just gets past defenders like that. Like, they're not even there. His dribbling is fantastic. It's on... I'd say basically his play style and the way he's on the wing, it's a little bit like Nicolas Pepe. He likes to do a few crossovers, he likes to take a man on down the byline, he's fantastic at whipping a ball in, he's fantastic in tight situations, he's, he doesn't panic, he doesn't look like a headless chicken, the ball will come to him and he flicks it through the defender, or the flicks it through the midfielder's legs and he's off, he's away. Is a very, very, very promising young lad, this very promising young man. And he's also been recommended for, um, I think, we're moving up to under-21s at the minute by uh, the guy who um, scouted Zlatan as well, when Zlatan was first uh, spotted in Sweden. So that's all I can say on this player. But I hope I've done him justice, and I hope that you go and check him out as well. Sweden, centre forward, international, 17 years old, Emil Roback. Go and look at him because he's absolutely, he's one for the future. Hello again. Steve, your chief scout, back here again with another edition of this week's dispute. This is no dispute. This is no dispute this week. My fellow colleagues in the past may have had a slight argument. There's, there's no argument this time. I'm going to tell you about an 18 year old kid from Nigeria, wonder kid, called Karim Adiembe, who was once paid in pizzas at his club in Nigeria. He was told that they couldn't pay him any cash, 
um, but he wanted to play so much, the coach offered him playing pizzas, and he paid for pizzas. Uh, true story. <laughs> um, he's, Mikko Arteta has now had his eye on Karim for quite a while now. At 18 years old, he's having the world's biggest clubs um, watching him. But as an Arsenal supporter as a boy, he, he seems that um, Arsenal would be favourites to get his signature. Not not an arrogant player, uh, but very confident on the ball. Very Paul Gascoigne-like, um, but on the pitch. <laughs> not not Paul Gascoigne-like off the, off the pitch, that's for sure. Uh, he has, he has dev devastating speed, quick feet, leads from the front with his ability and his will to win. And... He, he, he showed this um, when, in a cup game uh, against a team called Heffenheimer, uh, they was 2-0 down at half-time. They just had a man sent off in a dressing room. Uh, the, co the coach was doing his pieces. Karim, who was the youngest um, person in the dressing room at the time, stood up, said, don't worry, boss, I've got this. They went out onto the pitch into the second half. Karim picked the ball up in his own half two times ran the length of the pitch, scored two goals, got it back to 2-2, went through the penalties, and, have, and then they went on to win the game. This, this, this is, these are the type of players that we want at Arsenal Football Club. Fight. Fight and, and players that would pay for pizza. The ones this week that my, my, um, my colleagues will be bringing up, they won't, they won't be telling you half of the things of the fight and the power that this kid's got. So, this week... Kareem Abdiembe from Nigeria, 18-year-old wonder kid. Go and have a look at him. Steve, the chief scout, has told you, as usual, trust me, I never let you down, and I'll speak to you soon. Have a good day. Hi, everyone. Jerome here. My choice this week for the dispute is a 19-year-old Spanish midfielder that goes by the name of Cesar Gelabert. He plays for the mighty Real Madrid and although he hasn't made his first team debut yet, he's been making a lot of noise in the youth teams. Gelabert is an attacking midfielder who can play centrally but is also comfortable playing on either wings. He's been described by Zinedine Zidane as being extremely adventurous on the ball and someone with very high technical ability. Because his contract is due to end in 2021, coinciding with the fact that he hasn't actually played for the first team yet, I believe this is a player that we could get for a reasonable amount of money, which would suit Arsenal down to the ground. For me, he reminds me a lot of Danny Ceballos in terms of his playing style. And there's been a lot of talk recently of whether or not we would sign Ceballos for 30 to 35 million. Some people saying yes, some people saying no. So if I told you that we could sign a Danny Ceballos-like player who's three years younger that would cost a third of the money, I think a lot of people would go for that. Also, being the age he is, I think he's someone that Arteta could mould into a top, top player. So for me, my choice this week in the dispute, Mr. Cesar Gelabert. Told you. Go and have a look at Instagram page. There's going to be videos up soon of each and every one of them players. Adiemi. Rollback and Gilbert. Probably wondering why I'm in my garden. Because I messed up. I forgot to do the intro to the expert. And he deserves an intro. Like everyone else. So, let's listen to the words of South American expert. Not just South America. Colombia. He is an expert in Colombia. And he also knows his stuff about a few other countries around there. Especially Ecuador. And also, his interview is out next week. Let's check him out. Do you think the, um, with the current pandemic, do you feel like it will have an influence um, on the transfer fees? So potentially European teams could have something to gain and getting more money for their buck um, for, for the players who are probably would be about three, four million pounds more expensive and then get them a lot cheaper. Yeah, I, I know that players in South America, in, in Colombia, the prices are about 30% of what they were six months ago. Um, everyone, everyone needs to sell. Yeah. Every, every club needs to sell to survive. 
So um, there were teams that were looking very strong. I know America de Cali were looking in a really good place in terms of the, the side back in the Libertadores after a number of years. And they're going to have to sell all of their best players. Um, and they'll accept less than they would have usually. So, yeah, there's definitely a big opportunity. And I think a lot of clubs are now taking this chance to... Um, they're not going to buy a Neymar. They're not going to buy a 100 million, 150 million pound player at the moment because it just doesn't make any sense. But they can use that money and invest in some good young talent and spend five, five or six million here, two million there, three million there, and bring in the best 16, 17 year olds, 18 year olds, get the deal done now when the clubs are desperate to sell. Yeah. And then that's a, a long term investment. Um, so I think that's definitely a trend at the moment. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because there's been a lot of talk about uh, Talis Mango uh, for Liverpool and obviously Gabriel Veron been linked with Arsenal and I was thinking maybe now is the time to maybe follow up because Gabriel Veron, you, you, you win, he's one of the best players in the tournament in the under-17s under World Cup and mm -hmm. that's one player you'll be able to say is an exceptional talent when it's trying to get a work permit. So the fact that you should be able to get him a lot cheaper, it may be uh, an opportunity for clubs in Europe to pounce. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And another player from the U17, uh, the World Cup, I really liked was uh, Johan Mina of Ecuador. Oh, oh, he was a, he's a baller. He is a baller. Yeah. A baller. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the, uh, you know, people like to compare players to players. And, and for me, just Neymar, man. He just reminds me of Neymar with his, you know, uh, lean frame and his agility and his, his balance, his poise, you know, can skip past players, can play one-twos, can score long-range goals, six goals in eight games mm -hmm. for the U17. Yeah. Yeah, he's a very interesting player and he's just turned 18 as well, so... Have they sorted out his contract issue? Because I heard there was a contract issue that he wouldn't sign and they wouldn't play him and have they sorted that out? Yeah, no. Um, it looks though as though he's going to be moving on um, fairly cheaply. As you say, Amalek weren't playing him in competitive games, trying to push him towards getting a contract extension. This can sometimes be the case with some of these very interesting talents. The same thing happened with Jesus Marimon, who was the big, big star in Colombia a few years ago, and he refused to sign a contract extension. They put him in the reserves, and then everyone forgot about him for, for a year. It can be, yeah. But I think um, I think, uh, I think uh, Johan Mino is, is a player, yeah, definitely going to be off to Europe sooner rather than later. Um, I think he's an exceptional, exceptional player. Very quick, very agile. Mm -hmm. Runs on his toes, lots of one-twos, long-range goals. Yeah. Uh, definitely a player uh, I, mean, I like a lot. I mean, if he can get over his contract pursuit with his club and find a team where his development will progress, Johan Mina will, without doubt, be one of the best strikers in Europe. But there's a lot of ifs and buts at the maybe, and his contract situation is a bit techy. But watch this space and watch out for that player because he's a star in the making. On that note, I have to say, first week on the new channel, loving it. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for everyone who's been on the show so far. There's so much more coming. Peace out, stay safe, and wash your hands.